You cannot overcome a pandemic of this speed and this scale without the truth. The truth about everything, the numbers, the science, the outlook, but also about our own actions. Yes, it is true that no one was really ready for this. It is also true that too many were not there on time when Italy needed a helping hand at the very beginning. And yes, for that, it is right that Europe as a whole offers a heartfelt apology. But saying sorry only counts for something if it changes behavior. And the truth is, too, that it did not take long before everyone realized that we must protect each other to protect ourselves. And the truth is that Europe has now become the world's beating heart of solidarity. The true Europe is standing up, the one that is there for each other when it is needed the most. The one where paramedics from Poland and doctors from Romania save lives in Italy. Where ventilators from Germany provide a lifeline in Spain. Where hospitals in Czechia treat the sick from France. And where patients from Bergamo are flown in clinics to Bonn. We've seen medical supplies go from Lithuania to Spain and respirators go from Denmark to Italy. In fact, we have seen every piece of equipment go in every direction across Europe from whoever can spare it to whoever that needs it. This makes me proud to be an European. Of course, there are still some who want to point fingers and deflect blame, and there are others who would rather talk like populists than tell unpopular truths. To this I say, stop it. Stop and have the courage to tell the truth. Have the courage to stand up for Europe. Because this union of ours will get us through. And it will be a strong tomorrow as we make it today. And if you need inspiration, just look at the way the people of Europe are standing together with empathy, humility, and humanity. And I pay tribute to all of them to the delivery drivers and the food suppliers, the shopkeepers, the factory packers, and the balcony clappers, the companies changing their production lines to make the supplies we urgently need. I pay tribute to the Portuguese volunteers sewing masks for their neighbors, or the seven-year-old Greek pianist who composed an isolation waltz to keep people going. Above all else, I thank and I pay tribute to our heroes, the medics, the nurses, the care workers. They are the ones with bruises in their faces and tragic images in their hearts and minds. The ones holding the hands of the sick as softly and as lovingly as the families that cannot be there. They are the ones saving our lives and saving our honor, the ones we must protect so that they can protect us all.